Hello and welcome back to the Dante in a Year podcast. My name is Danny Fitzpatrick. Today we continue with Dante's Paradiso, Canto 5. If I inflame you with the heat of a love whose strength exceeds what's seen on earth, so that I vanquish the strength of your vision, do not marvel, for this proceeds from perfect scene, which, as it apprehends, so moves its foot to the good apprehended. I see well how the eternal light already gives back splendor in your intellect, the light which, having been seen, ever alone incenses love. And should another thing seduce your love, it's nothing if not a vestige of that one ill understood which there shines through. You wish to know if some other service might be rendered for the broken vow, such that the soul be secure from challenge. So Beatrice commenced this canto, and just as one who doesn't break his speech, continued her saintly process thus. The greatest gift that God and his largesse has given in creating, and most conformed to his goodness, and that he most prizes, was the liberty of the will, that with which the intelligent creatures all alone were and are yet endowed. Now the high worth of a vow will be apparent, should you follow the argument, if it's made so that God consent when you consent, For, in forming the pact between God and man, a victim is made of this treasure, just as I say, and it is made of his act. Then what might you render instead? Should you think to use what you've offered well, you would make good work of what's ill-gathered. Now you should be sure of the major point, but because the Holy Church may dispense in this, which seems counter to the truth I've uncovered to you, you must still sit a bit at table in that the rigid dish you've taken yet calls for aid for your digestion. Open your mind to that I'll now reveal, and fix it within, for having understood without retaining makes no knowledge. Two things convene in the essence of this sacrifice. The one is that of which it's made, the other is the covenant. This last can never have been cancelled if not served, and I spoke to you so precisely of this before, Then it was necessary that the Hebrews make an offering, even if each offering might be changed, as you should know. The other, the matter, as has been opened to you, may well be such that it not fail if changed with other matter. But no one should move the cargo on his shoulder according to his will, without the turning of the white and yellow keys. And believe that all such change is stupid if the thing set aside isn't gathered again in what's taken up, as four is in six. Therefore, whatever thing weighs so much by its worth that it would outweigh every balance cannot be satisfied with other spending. May mortals take no vows and chatter. Be faithful, and in this be not deceitful, as Jephthah in his first reward, who would have been better suited to say, I did badly, than in serving to do worse. And you'll find the great leader of the Greeks just as foolish, there where Iphigenia wept for her lovely face and made all gathered, the fools and the sages, weep themselves on having heard word of such a fate. Christians, be more grave in your motions. Be not as the feather at every wind, and think not that all water might wash you. You have the New Testament as well as the Old, and the shepherd of the church who guides you. These will suffice for your salvation. Should evil greed cry to you otherwise, be men, not mine sheep, so that the Jew in your midst not deride you. Do not be as the lamb that leaves the milk of its mother, and, silly and lascivious, combats itself in its play. Thus Beatrice to me as I write. Then she turned, all desiring, to that part where the world is most alive. Her silence and her semblance, transmuted, put silence upon my desirous mind, which already had advanced new questions. And just as the shaft that strikes the sign before the court is quiet, so did we course into the second realm. There I saw my lady so elated as she moved in the light of that heaven that the planet itself was made more brilliant. And if the star itself was changed and smiled, what was I made, who of my nature alone am changeable in every way? As in the pond that's tranquil and pure, the fish draw up to that which comes from without in the manner of that in which they feed, So I saw well more than a thousand splendors draw up toward us, and in each was heard, Behold who will increase our loves. 
And thus, as each came to us, the shades seemed filled with delight in the clear rays which issued from them. Think, reader, if that which here begins should proceed, how much greater your anguished craving to know would be. And you will see for yourself how deep I was in desire to hear from these of their condition, just as they were manifest to my eyes. O well-born to whom grace concedes the sight of the thrones of the eternal triumph before the battle's been abandoned, we are inflamed at the light that spins all heaven. And so, should you desire to share our clarity, satisfy yourself as you please. This was spoken to me by one of those spirits, and from Beatrice, Speak, speak securely, and believe as in God's. I see well how you are thus nested in your proper light, and that it leaps from your eyes, because it coruscates as you smile. But I don't know who you are, nor why, O worthy soul, you take the grade of the sphere that veils itself from mortals with others' rays. I said this directly to the light that first had spoken, at which it grew more luminous than before. Just as the sun that conceals itself in its own abundant light, once the heats commenced the temperance of the densest vapors, so, through its greater elation, was the sacred figure concealed from me within its ray, and, thus closed, replied to me in the way the coming canto sings. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Dante in a Year podcast. See you next time for Dante's Paradiso, Canto 6.